Moses is a type or a foreshadowing of Jesus Christ. Does, does everybody understand that? Amen. Yes. Because he was a deliverer chosen by God to go in and set the people free. So when the Lord spoke to him on that mountain and said, Therefore come now and I will send you to Pharaoh so that you may bring my people, the sons of Israel, out of Egypt. That's a foreshadowing of Jesus, mm -hmm. who was sent into the world. Philippians chapter 2, right? Now the man Moses was very humble, more than any man who was on the face of the earth. That's what it says. <laughs> Until, in the fullness of time, in a little place called Bethlehem, Jesus Christ, the Word of God, was made flesh and dwelt among us. And that was the most humble man. Moses himself prophesied of Jesus when he said, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your countrymen, and you shall listen to him. The Lord sent Moses to set his people free. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt, and have given heed to their cry because of their taskmasters. For I am aware of their sufferings, so I have come down to deliver them from the power of the Egyptians, to bring them up from that land to a good and spacious land, to a land flowing with milk and honey. And now listen to this. And now, behold, the cry of the sons of Israel has come to me. Furthermore, I have seen the oppression with which the Egyptians are oppressing them. Therefore, come out now, and I will send you to Pharaoh, so that you may bring my people, the sons of Israel, out of Egypt. First of all, I want you to know, God knows what's going on in your life. And there are too many Christians. You know, when, when you're being obedient to God, when you're walking in the Spirit of God, when you're walking in the world, God can make even your enemies to be a peace of But the fact of the matter is, don't ever get the idea that the world is your friend. And don't try and make friends with the world. We are called to love them. We are called to be ambassadors for Jesus Christ. We are called to proclaim the excellencies of Him who called us out of the darkness and into his marvelous light. You know what Passover is? It is a passage. That's the passage that we've taken, and we're supposed to proclaim that. The world hates you. Jesus Christ said, don't be surprised that the world hates you. It hated me first. See, am I telling you the truth? So don't be surprised. I run across Christians constantly who are surprised that the world hates him, because they are Christians and the world knows it. Now, if you can hide that, and many people do, many Christians, if you can hide your relationship with Jesus Christ from the world, maybe they won't bother you too much. Mm. Of course, you'll have to face Jesus Christ and explain it. <laughs> and he may bother you. Oh, but it's a choice that you have to make. It's a passage from death to life. That we're supposed to celebrate. God sent Moses into the land to set the people free. And you know how he did that? He did it by his mighty hand. He did it by bringing plagues on the earth. In Egypt. Right? So, this culminated in the tenth plague. The death of the firstborn. We're talking tragedy here. None of those plagues were fun. I mean, I, I think we treat them lightly when we even understand what they were. I mean, we're talking about the mighty hand of God bringing disaster and calamity upon the land so that he might work something in his people. Now, Christians tell me, well, that can't happen today. Where did you get that silly idea? God is still in control. Listen to me, I'm going to say this. Psalm 119, verse 165. <laughs> I'm going to say this, you deal with it. A tsunami happens, and I know it causes the death of thousands. An earthquake happens. A hurricane happens and wipes out a city. And everybody stands there and says, Ah, oh, it was Mother Nature. It was Father God, because He and He alone is in control. And he is still more concerned with your spirit than with your flesh. And he will reach out and do whatever it takes to set your spirit free. And bring life to your spirit. To take your spirit out of that place where it is dead. And you can go out there tonight in the town center. And you can see the walking dead. Dead walking in their transgressions. 
And God's desire is to take them in a passage, a passage into life. Mm -hmm. Regardless of what it takes to do that. It took incredible plagues to do that in Egypt. He is the same yesterday, today, and yesterday. God is not a man that he should change. Deal with it. But that last plague was horror. The death of the firstborn. The death born from the Pharaoh to the lowliest person in Egypt. The animals. The death of the firstborn. This was the hand of God Almighty, whose only desire is to bring life. But he'll do whatever it takes to get you where you need to be, where you can worship.